Okay, so for this first step, what I recommend you do is print out the first page of the pattern. And on the first page here, you have the test square. So use this test square just to make sure your printer hasn't um, scaled your printing to fit the page. Make sure it prints at 100%. And you can just double check that by grabbing your ruler and making sure it measures one inch either way or three centimeters either way. Okay. And when you're happy with that measurement, then you're ready to put your pieces together. Okay. So what I've done here is I've just trimmed away some of the edges just to make sure I can get the lines up and the squares together nice and evenly. Okay. So I'm going to stick all these pieces together and then I'm going to cut out the required size that I need. So once I've done that, I'll come back and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so for this next step, I've got my fabric ready. So I've got my right sides of my fabric or my pattern side of my fabric um, together. So I folded my fabric in half. So you should see the wrong side of the fabric facing up. And I'm going to put my selvage edges together. So usually with the selvage, selvage edges, it'll have um, some information about the fabric or um, color swatches uh, down the side. So I've got right sides together and selvage edges together there as well. I'm having trouble saying that word today. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my paper pattern that I've just prepared. Okay, and I've chosen to go with the large size for this one. Alright, and what I'm going to do is put a few pins just to secure it to the fabric. Okay, now something I forgot to mention is this grain line here. Now the grain line will need to run parallel to your selvage edge, okay, and that will ensure the stretch is going um, from left to right or horizontal when you're making your bib, okay. Um, I've, that's all the pins that I'm going to put in because I'm going to cut my um, material out with my rotary cutter now but you can use um, a sharp pair of material scissors as well if that suits you better okay so I'm going to cut all the way around and then we're ready for the next step now also if this bib is reversible so if you want to make the two sides different then you just need to cut out um, two pieces in two different pieces, in two different kinds of fabric. Okay, so now I've finished cutting out the fabric, I can remove the pins. And what I'm going to do next is transfer these leave open marks onto the wrong side of the top piece of fabric. Okay, so all I do is just move the pattern over slightly and with a fabric marker of some sort, just put a couple of little marks in the seam allowance. Okay. And then the two down the bottom here. And then you'll notice that on the sides here, near the corners, there will be uh, two little X's. These little X's indicate where you will need to place the elastic. So if you want to, 
you can put the X's on there as well just to remind you. Okay, then we're ready for the next step. Okay, in this step we're going to add the elastic onto our bib. Uh, now you'll find the required length uh, on page 2 in the fabric and elastic requirements table there. So this is the large size. So for the large size I've cut my elastic to 5 inches long. Okay, and to place it into our fabric, I might just zoom in a bit there for you. What I'm going to do is just peel back the top layer of fabric. And it's actually got the X here on this top piece of fabric, but I know that the roundabout place where it needs to go. So what I'm going to do is place up so the short edge of the elastic is lining up with the edge of the bib. Okay, so I need to make sure that I'm at least um, five eighths of an inch away from the edge of the bib because that's how wide the seam allowance is going to be. Okay, and then place the top layer back on top and then all I'm going to do is place a pin in there just to stop that elastic from moving around. Okay, and then I just repeat the same thing on the other side. Make sure those corners line up there. Okay. And then the next thing I do is just place a few pins around the edge of the bib just to keep the two layers together. And another little trick that I like to do, because I need to leave this big opening here, what I do at the beginning of the at the ends of the openings, I like to place a double pin. And this just reminds me to back stitch when I get to these marks. And then I don't accidentally sew my opening closed. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and place a few more pins around the edge of my bib, and then we're ready to do some sewing. Okay, so we're now ready to sew around the outside of the bib. I've got my machine all set up with the thread and the bobbin ready to go. And I've got my stitch length set to about a 2.4. Okay, now on my machine I have a walking foot, which I use for most of my projects. If you just have a standard foot with your sewing machine, that's perfectly fine. I just find the walking foot um, helps things, helps the fabric feed through um, quite evenly and when you come to doing these pesky little corners as well the walking foot will end up being quite handy. Okay so for the seam allowance it is one centimeters or three eighths of an inch. So on my sewing machine my three eighths of an inch line is here but uh, I also know that um, it's also it also lines up with the edge of my presser foot. So I'm going to line up my fabric with the edge of my presser foot. I'm going to lower my presser foot down and by the way this is my opening at the bottom okay and I'm starting with the um, from the pins on the left hand side if that makes sense okay. So I like to remove my pins as I go. Oops sorry about that. <laughs> it's not going to work. I'll take my pin cushion off. 
Okay, I like to make sure my needle finishes in the down position, just a personal preference. Okay, I'm going to make sure I do a back stitch just to secure that opening. All right, and off I go. Okay, so we're now coming up to the part where the elastic is sandwiched between the two pieces of fabric. So I'm just going to be mindful of that when I do this part. Okay, and I'm going to try and stop three eighths of an inch away from this edge of the fabric of my bib. Okay, I'm going to make sure the needle is in the down position. I'm going to lift my presser foot and pivot my fabric. Okay, lower my presser foot down and then I'm ready to sew along this edge now. Okay, so here you can see I'm coming up to the part where I have my um, smaller opening at one of the points on the bib. So I'm going to make sure that when I get to this first mark, I'm going to back stitch. Okay, I'm going to make sure my needle is raised, lift up my presser foot, and I'm just going to slide the fabric under until I get to the next point there. I'm going to lower my presser foot, put my needle down, and back stitch again and then when I finish the whole bib I'll go back and trim those bits later okay now this is one of the tricky points I'm going to do a few stitches stop and turn the fabric okay. and that way you get a nice curve the top there. And I'm going to repeat that when I get to the other small opening. Okay, now that we've completely finished sewing around the outside of our bib, we need to just do a couple more things before we turn the bib right side out. So what we need to do is we're going to snip away some of the excess fabric from around the points up here and off the corners here. And we're going to snip from probably about an eighth, an eighth of an inch or um, two or three millimetres away from our um, seam. Okay, we don't want to do go too close because then we risk um, breaking the seam. Okay, and the other thing we're going to do is we're going to just do little snips um, in, on all the inward curves and that will allow our fabric to sit, sit flat, allow the seams to sit flat once we turn them right side out. Okay, so that'll be these curves here and then the outward curves, we're going to cut little triangles out of them just so when the bib is turned right side out it will allow the, um, the bib to sit flat without the seam bunching up inside it there okay so I'm going to go ahead and do that I've got a sharp pair of scissors to do that with and for the snipping I'm just going to um, use some of these handy little um, snips here I don't know what the technical term is okay so I'll just give you an example so for these curves here just snipping probably about half an inch or maybe a centimeter apart just like that okay and I do that on all these curves there and the points up the top here I'm going to carefully snip away the excess fabric like so Okay, 
I would do that on the other point as well. Okay. And then on these outward curves here, I'm just going to cut about four or five little triangles out of the seam, like so. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off preparing these seams and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now I've finished preparing the seams, I've snipped around the corners and the edges, I forgot to show you that bit. Um, I've taken out some little triangle pieces out of the seams on the outward curves and I've snipped the inward curves to allow them, to allow the seams to spread and to lie flat once it's turned right side out. Okay, so to turn right side out, what I like to do is I've got a... Um, my favorite turning and stuffing tool here to turn it right side out but basically what you'll need to do is open up this big opening at the bottom and get the bib to come right side out through that. I'm going to show you how I do it with my special tool. I've got this little tube part. Okay, I'm going to put that right into the, one of the top points there. Hoping you can see that. Okay. And then I take the blunt end of this stick there and poke the fabric down the tube. And now I'm just going to push it over the stick. So basically, it's just a, an easier way to turn it right side out. And then the rest of the fabric just comes through. So really, if you can get that point through, okay, you're laughing. So if I do it without any tools, just there's a little bit of extra effort to get that point out. And then the other thing you might like to do is grab a chopstick if you have one or a blunt pencil and very carefully push that point out. Not too hard because you don't want to go right through the seam. Let's through my little hole that I left there, that's fine. Okay, and do that with the corners near your elastic as well. Okay, so there's my bib right side out. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure all of these little seams where the holes are uh, tucked in nice and neatly. I'm just going to run my chopstick around that seam just to get the curve to come out nicely. Okay. And fold this opening in. Um, I'm going to press this with an iron to get all the seams to lay nice and flat. And then I'm going to move on to the next step. Okay, so we've finished giving the bib a press with the iron. 
So our second to last step, we need to get the this end of the elastic into this hole that we've left at the top here. Okay, so what we need to do is find the hole that we've left when we're sewing the seam. You can see there. And we've got our end of the elastic. Just make sure that elastic isn't twisted. And we're going to just poke that elastic in probably until it reaches the seam on the other end there. Okay. And then what you can do is you can use a pin just to secure that elastic in there and stop it from falling out. Okay. And we're going to the other side. Just make sure that you do them the same way. Okay, so same thing, poke it in the hole there. And I've also got these wonder clips here that I love, which are really useful for this job. My elastic's twisted. I'm gonna fix that up. Okay, put the clip on there. All right, and now I'm ready to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to finish it off by top stitching all the way around and then add our snaps onto the points there. Okay, so for this step we're going to top stitch all the way around the edge of the bib. When I start, I like to start just below one of the pieces of elastic uh, on the bottom part of the bib. Okay, and I'm going to try and sew about, oh, about three, two to three millimeters or an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. You might like to do maybe a quarter of an inch, depending on what you feel comfortable with. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to line it up with a par, uh, just an edge on a part of my foot and I'm going to move my needle over just because that's what I like to do. I'm going to lower my presser foot down. Okay, and off I go. I'm going to get my needle to start and stop in the down position. A few back stitches, and away I go. Now I've just stopped just before the elastic on my first point. Now this can be one of the trickiest points, parts to sew on this bib. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the pin and I'm just going to make sure that that elastic stays in place. Okay. Now I'm getting close to the edge, to the end of the point. I'm going to start lifting my presser foot and doing a slight turn after every stitch. Now the walking foot will definitely help with this. If you're just using a standard sewing machine foot, you have the risk of getting your bib stuck in the sewing machine. The sewing machine or feed dogs may want to eat it. If your fabric gets stuck and you can't move it you might want to get um, a chopstick or a stick like this, a fork or something that you can, can give you some grip so you can push your fabric through because there's not much to really grab onto and to help feed it through the feed dogs if you do feel that your fabric is going to get stuck in there. Okay, so now we've completely top stitched around the edge of the whole bib. So the last thing we're left to do is attach the snap. Okay, so I've got my trust, trusty cam snaps, snap pliers here. I have my all, I'm probably not going to use this 
just going to try and get away with not using that. And I have my snaps. Now I've got my two caps, a socket, and a stud there. Okay. So all you need to do to put these little babies in is at the top of one of the points. I'm going to try and push the point of the cap through the fabric. Like so. Okay, I'm going to add the socket or the stud, doesn't matter which one. And then the cap goes into the black part of the pliers. Make sure it's sitting in there nicely. And just give it a good press. Oops. Like so. And then with the other one, just make sure it's going the other way so it can snap in nicely. Push it through your fabric. If you can't push it through the fabric, use the awl to make a hole first. Next one. Oops. Oops, if I line it up properly. Give it a good press. There we go. Our reversible stay on bib is now complete. Well done.